excited to be here to talk to you today about work with my co-author, um, Chase Boudin, who was with the San Francisco Public Defender's Office when we began this project, but if you will indulge my love of very bad um, PowerPoint effects, if it will work. What? Then my effects are gone? No. Well, anyway, there was supposed to be this big sparkly thing. Whatever. There's a big unveiling here. He's now the district attorney of San Francisco after a very exciting uh, political campaign. So, bummer. <laughs> All right. Not, not, not the winning of the campaign. Bummer about my, my lovely effects. All right. And this is also with Megan Price, who is my colleague at the Human Rights Data Analysis Group. And today I'm going to be talking about the impact of overbooking on pretrial risk assessment tool in San Francisco. So in order to do that, I need to define a couple of terms very quickly. Um, in San Francisco and in many other places, when a person is arrested, typically the arresting officer will transport that person to a jail, and there they report the legal basis for that person's incarceration. So these are the specific legal, the specific penal codes or charges that are used to um, justify the detention of that person. Um, and we define in this case overbooking as just booking a person who has been arrested on charges that are higher or more serious than warranted by the facts of the case. Um, it's, it's, it's worth noting in this case, one, that there's not a whole lot of accountability around what those charges are. It's essentially whatever the officer says. There's not a whole lot of feedback about what happened with those charges. And two, the, the local context here is really important in that a somewhat recent report came out and um, showed that these booking, char these booking decisions, these highly um, discretionary booking decisions, in fact, are one of the leading drivers of racial disparities in, in San Francisco's criminal justice system. And be but because we're doing this, um, in a quantitative way, we do need to operationalize what we mean by overbooking. We can't just leave it as this sort of nebulous idea that um, the booking charge is a little bit too high. So how we do that in this case is we look at the booking charges, so what the officer reported, and compare them to the charges after everything has happened through the criminal legal process. So what charges were they actually convicted of in the end? And in doing this, in doing this comparison, um, there's this sort of implicit assumption that the conviction charges are themselves a perfect representation of the appropriate charges that describe the crimes that were committed, which is very, very obviously not true. This is, in fact, a, um, a situation we often find ourselves in when we're dealing with criminal justice data and that we don't really have a really good ground truth to rely on. Um, in this case, you know, one of the reasons that might be is that these high booking charges may, for example, cause a person to be under more strict scrutiny, to be under higher levels of supervision, would in fact be detained, which could then cause them to take a guilty plea to higher charges down the road. So again, there's this really complicated relationship between the two. Um, however, in this case, we do think that the conviction charges are perhaps the most reasonable um, way, way to look at this, and that's what we're going to do going forward. All right. The other thing I need to talk to you about is pretrial risk assessment. So it looks somewhat like this, which it doesn't really tell you a whole lot. Input data is put into some risk assessment model. Out the other side will come something that looks like a risk score, something like a real rescaled probability, or something like a recommendation. Just let this person go, release them on their own recognizance, or all the way up to you should detain this person. In this particular case, some of those inputs are criminal history, demographic information, and those booking charges. Um, in the particular case we're looking at, um, the public safety assessment, it, which is a very common risk assessment tool that's used all across the United States. Um, what's under that risk assessment hood is a little bit complicated, so I'm going to take about one minute to tell you what that looks like. There are several models running under the hood. The first one, or the first two are models, or statistical models that estimate the risk of failure to appear and the risk of rearrest. So essentially statistical models predicting those outcomes. They, each of those give you a, a score from one to six, which get combined in this, in this decision-making framework. So those, those, those statistical models combined using something looking like this, if you got a one on the one hand and a one for the other, those two models, you'd end up in the green zone, which is just let you go. If you were high on both of those dimensions, say six and six, you'd be in the red. So the ordering here is green just let you go, red don't let you go, yellow, orange, intermediate, you have some conditions on your release. All right, there's another, there's another predictive model that goes into this which also takes into account booking charges in addition to the criminal history and demographic information. This is a violence risk model, so it outputs something like a violence flag. Um, does the model consider this person to be a higher risk of um, rearrest for a violent offense? Um, in this case, th that risk is fairly low. On top of this, and this is important, is the second stage here where these things called exclusions and bump ups, or what I'm calling that, come into play. And this is essentially a very, very complicated decision tree. So what this looks like is if any of these following conditions are true here, um, then no matter what, what that initial recommendation was from that matrix, we bump that person all the way up to the highest 
the highest levels, so they're excluded. They, they are automatically in the do not release category. And this could be something like one of the booking charges is murder, something very serious, robbery, et cetera, or some complicated combination of whether that violence flag was triggered and whether the charge was on this list of violent offenses, which is some 200 something charges long. Bump ups happen under these other set of conditions. Essentially, if the booking charge is on this other list of slightly less serious, can, so less serious um, charge codes, or some other combination of that violence flag and this complicated, um, this, this very long list of violence charges. And when a bump up takes place, it's simply if you are green, you get bumped up to yellow, yellow to orange, orange to red. You, your level of supervision is increased by one. All right, and at the, at the end of that, what comes out the end is that final recommendation. And so I think there's one more important thing to note here, which is that this first sort of portion here are based on statistical models. That's some of the things we're used to talking about when we're talking about fairness and all the things we like to talk about in this conference. There's a second part, these exclusions and bump ups which are based on politics. So which charges end up on those lists are essentially the, the result of some sort of complicated negotiation process with one of these things is um, implemented in a new location. All right, so what's the plan here to look to, at the impact of overbooking on this risk assessment tool? So we're going to run that risk, risk assessment model using the booking charges and get what the recommendation was if we use those booking charges. This is essentially what is actually done in practice. Then we're gonna wait a couple years. Like literally we sat around for like three years. And then we um, ran it again after we waited to see what the person was actually convicted of. So then we, instead of plugging in all the booking charges, we only plugged in the charges the person was actually convicted of. And then we can compare those two things. So we have what the model says under the booking charges only, and then we have what the model says if we're only accounting for the charges the person was convicted of. All right, to do this, we use data from San Francisco from a pilot run of the PSA. It was about 2,000 cases processed during this pilot study, and we matched those with court records for which contained all charges for any individual who touched the criminal justice system in San Francisco during that time period. Um, and those court records contain additional information like demographic information, which I won't get to go into today for lack of time, how these sort of how these effects vary by different demographic groups. You should check out the paper. But this data also provided us the outcome for every charge. Was this person actually convicted of that, of that charge or not? All right, and so again, the results I'm going to be very brief here because I think there's sort of one main takeaway, which is that in about 27% of the cases analyzed, the individual received a higher recommended, recommended level of supervision based only on charges that they were not convicted of. Rarely, very, very rarely did the reverse occur. So we have this case where these, these booking charges, again, highly discretionary charges that haven't really been tested at all by the criminal justice system for Close about a quarter of the cases are actually used to justify higher levels of supervision in the end. And it may be expected that the booking charges are not exactly identical to the conviction charges, because if they were, after all, what's the point of going through the whole criminal justice or criminal legal process, right, if the booking charge is just assumed to be the final result? But what is perhaps surprising is how often people are booked on charges that are very serious. When we look at those lists, we see those lists as very serious charges, things like murder, things like that have been classified as violence. And so people are booked under those charges, but the facts of the case don't actually um, support um, convictions on those particular charges. And so to close very quickly, I think I'm out of time. Um, I'll just say one thing very quickly. Um, I think this has a lot to do with accountability for police and there's potential for gaming the system because there is so little accountability around what those booking charges are, booking an individual on higher charges with the intent of um, inducing a higher recommended level of supervision. And finally, um, you know, while judges do have the power to, to, to mandate higher conditions of release based on serious booking charges, um, those charges don't necessarily correlate with higher levels of risk, which is sort of the point of what this tool is trying to do. And embedding those charges, um, those charging considerations in the final recommendation may communicate to judges that merely having been booked on such charges increases those empirical risk levels, which again, isn't true. In fact, such overrides are an instantiation of politically driven policy. And given the large impact that we're seeing of booking decisions on the output of the tool, it is really critical that judges understand this, this important distinction. Thanks. <laughs>